Hello! Wait. Boof. Hi! Welcome to Now Kiss. The solo Now Kiss because Cameron is sick. Hi, everybody. I think everybody's having a good morning. I'm having a good morning. I slept in. Uh, I share my home with a tiny human who decided at 5 a.m. that she needed to be awake and that she needed to go to the bathroom and that she just needed some hugs. Uh, and that took me a long time to go back to sleep after that. And uh, then... Uh, do I look dark? I think I look fine. Um, and then, then, uh, uh, then we all needed to sleep in. So normally I wake up very early and wake up at like eight, but I slept until nine today, which is not enough time for me to go directly to the office with no stops whatsoever. Uh, so don't mind me just drinking my coffee. Um, oh, you always look dark. Thank you, A. Steve G. Uh, but we are finishing up with the last of Analog, a hate story. We got some, like, we sort of, like, broke the game a little bit by skipping around the, uh, the, uh, sequence where you have to, like, do stuff in a hurry, uh, which is very funny and clever, and I feel very smart for doing that. Uh, so we've got some stuff that we can show, uh, the other AI. mute. The notes are in Cameron's book, so I don't... And Cameron's sick, so I actually don't know what the, uh, <laughs> eight early. Yeah, if I don't need to be at work till 9.30, waking up at eight is plenty of time. Uh, the problem being I don't know the, the number of which, uh, of which of those things I'm supposed to be showing uh, mute is because Cameron took all the notes. Jack can help, don't worry. Ah, messages. Uh, which block was it in? It wasn't in block 10. I don't know why I just went back there. Oh yeah, booth. Oh, sorry. I didn't, I didn't wake up very... I woke up very quickly. And the chair's still in shot. I woke up very quickly after an extremely disturbed sleep. So, I'm cranky when I have to get out of bed before 10, says Anonymous Liss. Yeah. Well, here's the, here's the deal. Like, everybody's different. Nope. Is it block seven? This one, I think. How stoned is the moon base right now? Not at all! It's 9.47 in the morning! What do you think Canada is like? Oh, that other chair is still in shot. Look, it may be... M marijuana may be legal here, but we're still... Uh, yeah, we're, we still have work to do here. Uh, yeah, this is the one. 7 e, uh, EUX25. All right. Do, 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 do. 7 dash EUX25. <laughs> now. Which is the one? Probably. Probably mute. It's been a couple weeks. I don't know what I'm answering. Alrighty, so, ah, there's something else. This is exactly what I wanted to do. So 
So how do I go about showing her this? Home. Access log documents. Seven. Dash. E U X 25. I think that was it. Yes, perfect. Show message! Did we read Rachel's 14 page letter? No? What? What? I. What the fuck did I just read? No way, I don't. Is this for real? Is this something that actually happened to her? Yes! It's okay to. Wow. Huh. So she wasn't quiet just because she was being a good woman. Then I guess she wouldn't have been able to ask anyone for help. I thought. Oh, I just justified the actions of her society. That's okay. I thought. Well, that still doesn't justify mass murder. I kind of knew Mute wouldn't be into this. But wow, that's all kinds of messed up. That's just horrible. No kidding! I take it back, then. I take it all back. She might be a murderess, but okay. You've convinced me to feel pity for her, at least. Well, okay, then. Well, I guess I should probably talk to her now. Maybe I misjudged her. I don't know. I guess there's only one way to find out, right? I'll be back in a short bit, then. Cool! Alright, looks like she's in an AI core that's currently disabled. I can't access her right now. That's fine, though. It hasn't been very long. She shouldn't have degraded yet. Ah. Ooh, I'm gonna ask you to use the copy command to transfer the contents of the core she's in to mine. I can show this again? No. Alright. We got there. Oh, subs! Right, I'm supposed to be reading subs too. Gosh, I just woke up. Hey, Prof Clarity... Prof Clary Sage has just subscribed for nine months in a row. Thank you, Clary Sage. All right, him. Use override terminal. Ah, uh, it's so good remembering how to do all this after two weeks. Don't mind me just eating my breakfast here. Hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, da 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 da. What am I doing here? Copy source core and into target core. All right. Ooh, I haven't gotten to watch live in ages. Hi, everybody. Hi, Prof. Clary Sage. I get a list of my cores now. Well, because it's source core to target core, and I think she's in. I think it's power control. Ah! Power control. So I need to copy core two, core one. What? Oh, she's in one? Hey, Hungry Hungry Hobo just subscribed for 38 months in a row. Why did I not hear the notifier go off? Well, that's... I th Maybe I just didn't hear it because I was distracted. Bye, Bugs Bite. No, it's okay. This works. All right. Quit. All right, you did it. I'm gonna get her, okay? Um, hello there. 
Mute told me the one that you were the one that convinced her to just listen to me. Granted, I don't understand how what you did to show her that was possible. Did you cheat the system somehow? What a delightfully self-aware game. Just call me like some sort of super hacker. Well, no matter how, thank you. Right, okay, so go ahead and ask him, Hunai. Ah, what? No, you should say it. It's embarrassing. Ahem, what did we talk about with arguing? Sorry, sorry. Very well. It's, uh... This is hard to say. Well, it's really, like, for the best if... What?! Please let us be your wives? Why?! What? What? I don't know why I'm sneezing into my open hand. I'm very, very clean. That was not what we agreed on asking. You said it would be improper if I wasn't. Ugh, wow. If you don't have to say it like that, that's just gonna scare him off. Ah, jeez, I didn't mean to make it sound like... Okay, look, here's the thing. It's not ideal for Hunai to stay on the ship forever. I don't want to be your wife, okay? Man, Hunai, you're making me sound ridiculous here. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Fine, whatever. Okay, right. What I was saying before, it'd be really good if you took her with you. And, well, I could come along to make sure she's safe. Don't take any of it the wrong way. It's just out of a sense of duty and absolutely nothing more. Look, just ignore what she said. I don't want to be part of some harem, okay? I just think it's the best way to fulfill my duties here. Salvage the situation. Really? I uh, don't see why, well, you know, if it would be so bad to share if it was someone like that person. Ah, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Don't let her scare you off just because she's in love, okay? Just be strictly charitable arrangement. Don't make it romantic, you and I. Jeez, I'm not in love. It's just I really... Shut up. And knock off the whole Sunder Act, okay? You're not fooling anyone. <laughs> Look, okay, you can drop down to the console to take the ship records with downloads, but please take us with you when you do that, okay? Doesn't have to be a permanent arrangement. Just transport to civilization would be fine. Uh, but if you want it to be permanent, silence is a virtue, Hugh and I. Stop it. <sighs> okay, so most, 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 of the, most of the last let the last now kiss causes quite the shock. I need to watch the VOD to figure out how we got here, says Dogma. Hell yeah, you do. This is We're just tidying up loose ends on this stream because I didn't want to start a new game and then be like, well, now I'm going to PAX Australia, so the stream's off, and then it's coming and it's not going to come back for a week between coming back from PAX Australia, catching up there, and then, uh, then going off for Desert Bus, so I didn't want to start a new game. At least not something I could play. We, I still thought we had more to explore in this space. Uh, okay, well, that's all. I'm gonna deactivate us both now. See you soon. Alright, I guess I'm just gonna download. Yes. There are tons of logs we're missing. The whole section, so all kinds of plot. Yeah, I'm. I know I'm excited, but I was like, I know how to get this ending. Ah! The harem ending. Incoming message. Oh yes, you get paid. Uh, it's ending five. Ooh, we got some new chivos. The hair mending. Oh. Lol, lol, lol. So this would be... This would probably be... You're like, no romance. Which I didn't have the heart to do. The Mugungua. 
Their save from this game determines who you have with you in the sequel, too. Ooh. Uh, the investigator leaves alone. I can get that if you just don't take them with you. The security program is relieved of her duties. I wonder how I get that one. Alright, so I, I'm still missing, like, block one. I got everything in block two. Oh, thanks, Rocket John. I'm missing a couple things. Uh, I feel like we're just into full, like, let's break the game spoiler territory. By the way, if you like this game, please buy it. It's not even expensive. I think it's very good. I guess we stick solidly on mute sides for one of those endings. Uh, well, I think, I think you could probably just take mute. But, uh, does anybody have, do we have any other good questions on, uh, what game is it? Yeah, you download mute only for her ending. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, that would be the security program as relieved of her duties. I don't know why I'd want to take mute. Uh, so how do I, how do I, that's weird, I am playing a game. How do I, uh, how do I, oh no, did I forget to change the thing before I went online? Ugh. Whoops. I really did. I'm so bad at this. I was in such a hurry when I came in. That's... Ah, these professional streams. That's why you like Loading Ready Run. Let's dig for secrets. Category. Games. Playing games. Where's the co-pilot? Uh, Cameron is sick, so I am doing this solo. Uh, category... Analog. I hate story. Whoop. Update information. Alright, so who's got ideas on how we can get that extra 28% uh, here? You have to make a cake and email a picture of it to Christine Love. Logs! Cheat at logs. Well, how do I do that, though? Go to, to go get these logs. <laughs> Oof! This is kind of a backtrack. Ooh, sub hype four! I actually heard the sub notifier that time. Hey, Coriolis Storm. Subscribe for 11 months in a row saying, Hey Kathleen, I loved your Seattle vlog. I loved it too. Thanks to Ben for doing such a good job editing it. I'm not really sure what I should be looking for is the problem. Oh, I can show her all these and trigger the meltdown sequence. Yeah, I'm not really sure what I should be doing here. Eleven ABO four. 
I'm just getting log, uh, log stuff from chat now. Thank you, Cassie13. Oh, I was in the right place. 11. A, B, O, 4. Oh, this is exactly where I was. Oh, there's a Smith family tree from Hunai. I'm just interested in seeing it. I think we showed- I think we might have looked at this one. Oh, no. It's- it's very similar. And this- yeah. It's basically the same. You did see it. She made it after seeing Buttes. Wow, oh, thanks guys. Anything else that we should be looking at, Cassie thir uh, Cassie 13? So we have, we're missing all of block one. We're missing... Hmm. Ben's been doing loading times? He has! And we're trying a little something new with loading time. Not sure, there's blocks ones and sevens and eights. Yeah. Oh, I feel bad for like going online with the stream and we only had like 15, 20 minutes worth of content to do, but now I'm, I guess I could, in general, show the AI every log. Yeah, but I don't want to sit here and make us watch through that. Devlog gets my vote. It'll probably just be loading time. Uh. Huh. Horse kissing? I wish I beat horse boyfriend. Uh. Let me see here. I bet there's some spoilerific stuff I could look up. Ha 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 ha. Block eight. Let's see. What are we sort of missing here? Block one. <sighs> ah, letter to Sun He. All right. I get block one by showing Kunai question seven from Mute's questions. So let's do that. <laughs> it's not like I ever thought as a child I would never marry. You tell me though, could you marry someone you'd only ever talk to once? Of course not. Well, then maybe you shouldn't be judging me for it. It's not like my fault. We both read the same logs. I wasn't the only person on the ship to be crushed by a horrible marriage. Maybe I could have done unspeakable things with our servants, like Oso oh Jin did. Is that what you meant by a happy marriage? Sorry, I'm not usually the sarcastic. I just don't think it's a fair question. The two older Kim sisters. You should read their letters. Here, I'll show you. They had it just as bad. It's a really unfair question to ask. Oh, and oh no. Ah, right. I never said I'd interrupt you unless there's something really wrong because that's annoying, but I don't want to bother you. But we have a really big problem. All right. 
Reactor meltdown! Let's do the reactor meltdown. But we figured it out last time, and last time there's still enough time, so I'm not super stressed about it yet. Alright. Uh, yes. You'll help me? Yes. Drop to the terminal and disable the nuclear reacting. Cool. Alright, use override terminal. Alright, so let's see here. There's uh, help. PSS. Oh, that's not right. Uh, there's power. It's power control list. Yes. All right. So, ah, uh, let's see. Disable core one. Oops. Core one, core three, core four, core five. Ah, sick hacking skills. Core six, docking, gravity, uh, rail, and sensors, and waste. Oh, come on. Disable. Four, one. What? No cam today. What the ending looks like if you let the reactor melt down? Oh, well, we might find out. Disable. What am I, what am I getting wrong here? What's the actual command here? Power control disable core. Right, I've got to put in power control. Power control disable core one. Yes, that's fine. Power, power control, disable. Let's try to disable multiple things at once. Perfect. Power, control, disable, core, five, core, six, rail, waste. Alright. Power, control, list. What's still on? Da, 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 da. Cool. Power control. Disable. Alright. Uh Docking. Don't care. Gravity. That's a big waste of space. Sensors. Uh and then so power control. Perfect. Okay, we're under our 20%. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, missed one, unfortunately. Hmm. All right. We need you and I. We don't want to disable the main functionality. Ah, yes. Alright, uh... Switch. Oops. Switch battery. Rah! PSS switch battery.
Okay. Uh, how do I disable my reactor power? Right. Reactor. Reactor disable. Yes. Ah, is it bad that I want something like this hanging out in my house? Hmm. Cool. And of course, now I need to talk about how that doesn't help. And she's gonna be like, there's still a problem. That's a critical temperature. This is really bad. I feel like I'm dying. Please, you have to do something. All right, hold on. Use override terminal. And then it was turn on the life support and then uh, empty the bulkheads. Uh, so... Thanks for subscribing. I feel like... I feel like, uh... I feel like... It, hey, and Andy1503 subscribed for six months in a row saying, Yay for stable job, finally hit six months in a row. Congratulations to you for many things. And OG said, just pretend that I wrote something funny here. Thanks, everybody. Ah. It's a little less, uh, a little less hectic when you know exactly what to do. You did it. You did it. Excuse me. Yay! We did it! Very much so. Let's take a break. Ooh, there's something you said that got my attention earlier, but I was a little too distracted to ask further. You said you could actually get out of range in time. You'd have to be moving incredibly fast to do that. And while I had sensors working before, I've seen your ship. I know it's only big enough for one person. It sounds awfully remarkable that you could have a ship like that just for yourself. I just mean in my time, we were using generation ships, and that was incredibly state-of-the-art. wonder if you could turn the reactor back on. Probably not. Space must feel awfully smaller to you than it ever did to us. Is that normal? Do you do all this in time? Go to strange adventures by yourself in deep space? Uh, not quite. That makes sense, although I'm sure I wish you could explain that to me. I'm just really curious. See, when I found out I was going to get put into space to stasis to wake up later, that was the future I always dreamed about. One that was full of amazing things like, I don't know, holograms, miracle medicine, ships that travel faster than light, colonies on other planets. That's sort of amazing. I, I mean, I've never liked science fiction. It's just too unrealistic. When I was a kid, I figured it'd still be fun to live in it. Imagine my surprise. But it sure sounds like you're from that future. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm rambling, aren't I? Just, it's just the idea of finally getting to that perfect future I was denied. Traveling with someone in deep space? Well, that sounds awfully romantic. Sorry, I'll stop now. Let's get back to the serious business. Ha ha! Let's look at these uh, docos in block one. T 
to Kim Unmi from Sun He. Or no, to Sun He from Unmi. Dear Sun He, I wish we'd had more of a chance to talk before I left. I'm sorry it was so sudden. Not my choice, please believe me. It's really weird living in somebody else's house. Even just like the place itself, you know. The walls of the house are way smaller. And there aren't even separate women's quarters. It's pretty much just a paper divider separating us from the men most of the time. So you can see and hear everything. It's so weird. One sec, I need to go blow my nose. You guys don't want to hear me sniffling on camera. Thank you. What do you want to talk about? Say, I'm, I just had a thought. Ah, this, this, this whole uh, schoolgirl librarian look. Now we get the costumes. Cosplay. Yes, I do want to see your cosplay. I like how there's we can have power for this. All right, we'll change your outfit after we finish reading this. Although there's there's a lot more to do around the house. If you thought mom was strict, wow, mother-in-law makes her seem positively gentle in comparison. I know, I'll just have to get used to it, but she kind of scares me. Plus, we don't have any servants here at all, so I have to handle pretty much all the chores. I'll try to write to you regularly, though, so long, so long as I can find the time. Mother-in-law keeps me pretty busy during the day with housework, and my husband keeps me pretty busy during the night with other work. It's pretty much chores all day, every day. But I'll try to sneak in another letter soon, alright? Ugh. With love from your oldest sister, Yun Mi. So far sounds good, right? Things fell apart with between them with time, though. See, here, see for yourself. Dear Yun Mi, I wish you could have found the time sooner, but if you say you're busy, fine, I believe you. Things aren't very interesting at home. Mom's been really busy lately, and I think she's in a big hurry to get me married. I wish she wasn't. How come you didn't how come you didn't have to do interviews until you were 14? Lucky. Ugh. One of them seems nice though. I think the man's name was O. I talked to his to his mother about you for a little bit. I don't remember what brought it up, but I told her about the dolls you left me. The second interview we did, she brought me one of hers from when she was my age and said I could keep it. Interviews suck, but I think I'll be fine with marrying her son. I mean, if I really have to. She sounds better than your stupid mother-in-law. Love, son, he. This is miserable. No kid that's still excited about dolls uh, is should be getting married. Dear you and me, thanks for being able to come to my wedding, even if it was just for a day. Don't worry about mom, what mom said about you not having kids yet. You shouldn't take that personally. I was really happy to see you again, since I wasn't sure if I ever would. I love you, big sister. I'm sorry for bothering you with this so soon after we spoke, but I really need you to answer something for me. I really don't have anyone to else, else to ask, and I'm really, really, really worried about something. It's really embarrassing, but I just have to know. And then I moved in. My husband and I slept together. I'm not ignorant about how that's supposed to work. I know. I know why. After. Uh, uh, I don't want to read this. Miserable. Oh my goodness, I have all of their letters now. Dear Sun He, no, 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 you don't need to see a doctor. I'm sorry to be the bringer of bad news, uh, little sister, but I'm afraid your husband's right. That really is normal. Don't worry about freaking out either. You're a lot you're a lot younger than I was when I got married, so it's probably even worse for you. I'm so sorry. It gets a little easier after the first time. Yuck. Oh, I don't want to read this, this is awful. That aside, how have you been? I haven't. How's your new family? Haven't heard much about them. I kept trying to ask mom to tell me about your husband, but all I got was that lecture about how it was, I was nearly three years old when she'd been married for as long as I had. As if I'm not trying. So do tell me more about him and his family. Please, Sunhee, I'd love to know. With love from your older sister, you and me. Sunhee, ugh, miserable. If you're lucky, you'll get pregnant quickly. Ugh. 
I said in my last letter that, that I was pregnant, and thanks for the congratulations, but I hope you didn't rush to tell Mom. Uh, you'll have to send her the bad news. It was a false alarm. I'm afraid I bled this month. Hope you're doing better, little sister. Your child is due any day, right? Uh, dear you and me, I wish I could have written you sooner, but I'm afraid I haven't had the time. What with having a real pregnancy and all to worry about. My mother-in-law insisted to take the time to write to my family, though, so I just finished a letter to Mom first. Sorry about your false alarm. I did tell Mom, and she, was very, she wasn't very happy to hear it. I'm sure you're not really surprised by that, though. The good news! I gave birth two weeks ago. Her name is uh, Gian, and she's the cutest little child you ever see. She reminds me a lot of our little brother, although she has her father's eyes, really. I wish you could meet her. I just, I just know you think she's absolutely adorable. So I'm a mother now. I still can't think of myself that way. It's so weird. Right now, she's just so small, and I can't even lift her, and she can't even lift her head. But every time I look at her eyes, I wonder how I'm going to be able to raise her. Mother-in-law says I shouldn't worry. It'll come naturally, and she'll be there to do. She'll be there to help. But I guess that's true. I definitely don't know what I'd do without her. At the very least, I'm sure I wouldn't ever get any, any sleep. It's just scary, you know. Wasn't it just yesterday that we were playing together at her father's house? Now it's been nearly 16 years since I was born, and I'm a wife and a mother. How did we get so old? <laughs> It doesn't always come naturally. No! As a breeder... Ugh, I mean, it could be worse. I know it's a good age for both of those things, and it's really disappointing if you're older and haven't managed that. I have it good. Just odd to think about it. But I'm not complaining, and oh, when you're a mother, you'll understand why, big sister. I just love her so much. She means everything to me. Anyway, I'll stop rambling. I think Gian is crying to be fed now, and mother-in-law can't help with that. So I'll leave there. Take care, sister. Love, soon he. Ugh, that sucks. Dear Sun He, well, maybe you could use a little more caution in what you said to Mom, because it's not like you don't know how annoyed you can get, especially at me. There's a reason you're the only one she still actually talks to. I'm trying, you know, but I can only do so much. Congratulations on your daughter. I'm really excited to hear about that. Yeah, it's a shame I can't see her. She sounds wonderful. I don't really have much else to say. I just wanted to acknowledge your letter. Things haven't really been worth talking about. My mother-in-law is still a crazy tyrant, and my husband and I are still trying to have a son. Nothing new, nothing worth mentioning. I'm glad things are going much better for you. With regards, you and me. There, you and me. How long has it been since we wrote each other? It feels like it's been forever. I wish you wouldn't be such a stranger. I have a two-year-old son now. His name is Tai Hyun, and he takes after his father in a lot of ways. He's just started to learn to talk now, much more th much earlier than Ji In did, no surprise. But Ji In is a real smart sweetheart. She's She's what reminded me of you. Yeah, these poor sisters weren't even allowed to see each other. Nope. The two of them was fought, so I was scolding her. I told her that I was disappointed, that I expected better from her as an older sister. And I gave her the whole filial responsibility speech. You know, the one that mom always used to give. It's funny, I hated it so much as a kid, and I promised myself I'd never guilt my own children that way. Now I just think to myself, well, it worked, didn't it? Anyway, she asked me what it meant to be an older sister, and I had trouble with that one. Finally, I said, it means you should be a good role model. Teach your little brother what it means to be responsible by example. Show him. That's actually not a bad thing. That was a good enough answer for her, but I thought about it. I thought, I, but I thought all about it, and it's not a good enough answer for me. Not at all. It's you that I've been thinking of, and you know, I turned out okay. I wish I could take back what I said and tell Gian what I'm going to tell you. You don't have to be perfect. You're not a good role model, but it's fine. I will love you anyway, big sister, and I always will. Wow, this is like so twisty of the knife, but somewhat unintentionally. Even if everyone is disappointed in you, even if you're not really family anymore, as far as I'm concerned, you're still my big sister. You don't have to be perfect. I love you, period. Please write back, sister, even if you don't have good news to report. I just want to hear how you are. <sighs> Woof. There's one more that you and me never sent. I'm gonna warn you though, it's really intense. Are you sure you want to read it? Yes. Well, there you are. It's been added. Please don't say I didn't warn you though. Uh oh. Be. Be prepared. Uh, 
dear send me. Okay, you know what? Fine. I'll tell you the truth. The false alarm? It wasn't a false alarm. I didn't lie about the bleeding. That was true. But I was really pregnant at the time. More than I let on my I let on in my letter. As in morning sickness, giant belly, you can see it. I was really pregnant and bleeding. My husband brought in the doctor immediately who asked me all sorts of questions about everything. I was fine, perfect health, no injuries, I told him. <sighs> so he pulled out his instruments and started listening for my son's heartbeat. And listened. And listened. And listened. It felt like forever that he kept trying and I couldn't understand why he couldn't find something. I knew it just had to be there. <sighs> the obvious never occurred to me. He had to explain it. I'm sorry, the doctor said. There's no heartbeat. The fetus is dead. He couldn't do anything about it. Ugh. It took, a, it took a week for the actual miscarriage to happen. It was the worst week of my life. It was hellish. You had two children. I'm sure you know that wonderful feeling you get when you realize you're with a child. That you know you're going to have a baby and you can feel it inside you and imagine what he's going to look like and what he'll grow up to be. And that right now that he's depending on you more than he ever will to keep him safe. You know the feeling, I'm sure. Just the day before, I'd been so happy and I was finally going to have a child. After I found out, I could still feel him. Dead, but still inside me, sloshing around. Ooh. Pish up, just subscribe for five months in a row. Welcome to the world's heaviest stream. Ugh. Woof. Ugh, God, that must have been horrifying during the Joseon era. This is terrible. Uh, I'm gonna keep reading, but feel free to feel free to peace out if you, this is too much for you, and that's totally okay. We'll let you know in chat when this sort of branch of the game is over. First I'm gonna Achoo! 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 Ugh. After I found out I could still feel him, dead but inside me, sloshing around. The day before, I thought I was filled with a beautiful life, but I was actually filled with death. I would have no son, what I was carrying was just a corpse, weighing me down. I thought I'd feel better once I expelled it, but then I saw this awful, bloody mess that should have been a son. It was awful, so awful. After I saw it, my husband had to force me to wash myself, because all I wanted to do was crawl into my bed and die. I didn't get out of bed for a whole month after that, save for a brief hour, so I could write to you and tell you I wasn't pregnant. Eventually I recovered. I realized it wasn't really my fault. Eventually we started trying again. After all, what you mom and mother-in-law have all been implying is right. I'd be a lousy wife if, after eight years of marriage, I still haven't had a child. So we tried, and I eventually did get pregnant. Then it happened again. That was half a year ago. You're right. I'm not perfect. I'm as broken as it gets. The one most important thing in the world for a woman to do, and I can't. You've been pregnant twice now, and you have two wonderful children that you love. I've been pregnant twice, and all that's happened is I've killed them both. I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why. The doctor says I didn't do anything wrong, but clearly I can't bring life into this world. Ah, uh, The only thing I can bring is death, little sister. Today I overheard my husband talking to my mother-in-law about considering taking on a second wife to actually give him a child. He sounded really disappointed in me. I don't know what I'd do. Kill myself, maybe, since killing seems to be all I can do. Be better for everyone. Oh, so miserable. This is terrible. That's very sad. I don't know about you, but I had a really hard time reading that the first time. Can you imagine that? It's even as if I knew her. I didn't even know one either existed when I was alive. I mean, sure, their mothers mentioned that their mother mentioned she'd had daughters before in a sort of abstract way, but she never told me as so much as their names, let alone well anything. Storm of Cluffy, sub for six months in a row. But anyway, none of that was my original point. My point was, now do you see what I mean? When Mute talks about a happy marriage, that's what she's talking about. It's not as if I'm the only woman to have a horrible marriage. It wasn't my fault. That's just, that's what happens. That's normal. Woof. Alright, All right, so now we have all of block one. So go back to my little cheat sheet on game facts. Uh, okay. Block two. Do we have all of block two? Yes. Block three. Uh... Oh, I've got to show Mute a bunch of stuff here. Or, block three. Brought home... Uh, let's see. De 
crypt block through and speak to Hugh and I. Ah, okay. Yeah, mute's gone. Ah. Ah. Ah, this is the story of the, uh, this is the story of, uh, Smith's wife and her, and her girlfriend, I guess. Which we have already read, so I'm gonna sort of gonna skim through this. Show this to her. And then she gets sort of dismayed. So, hi, Magistrate Smith Sangmin, huh? I'm just sort of skimming through this because... Oh, he's awful. We have already read all of these things, so I'm skimming through it. Because this, this is a new stream, but I'm just trying to make sure I get everything. And it's easier to go through the blocks in order. Ah, yes. This is Mute, who actually likes the, the drunken Sang Jung. Tab or control will skip through everything. Perfect. All right, we've got everything now. To do, to do, to do. I will say this, when they talk about his legendary temper, it's kind of interesting that, like, he was very close to not being a jerk, but not quite. Oh, no. I skipped through. So what do you think? Are you satisfied with that overview? Hmm. Uh, yes? Oh, well, that's good. Ah, my family considered them political enemies, and the men were always so insistent on our family taking their place to the point where, well, you know. It just seems to me that the men destroyed themselves and dragged, like, and dragged women like poor So Jin with them. I don't understand how Mute plays it at all. That's the weird thing to me. Still, though, what an awful marriage. So Jin had... I feel so bad for her, to be thrown away and forgotten like that. You know what, though? In a per sort of perverse way, I'm a bit relieved to read another story like hers. So I know it's not just me. A reminder that it's not just because I was from another time. It would have sucked even if I was bored in that period. Does that sound bad to you? No. Oh, really? Well, thank you for saying that. I'm so happy you understand. Anyway, I suppose that's all. Thanks for indulging me in going through their story, though. I really learned a lot just now. I won't waste your time with any more babbling. Shall we get back to whatever we were talking about before? Yeah. Alright. So, we've seen all of block three. I suppose it, We've seen all of block five. We've seen all of block two. I've seen all of block four, question mark? No. All right. Oh. There's only... Hmm. 
I don't know if I can do everything unless I have mute in block four. Did you ever ask your mute questions? No, I didn't. Yeah, I'm looking at a spoiler for how to get all of block four, and I need to show mute all of these things. Uh, so I think we might be locked out of block four, which kind of is frustrating, but that's okay. Let's see. All right. Well, I gotta show her some of, uh... Let's show her mute questions! Or you can just post the codes. Oh, I don't have the codes here. Uh, I'm just, like, reading a little, like, a uh, little thing that's like, how to get through. So let's just walk, work through mute questions, because we never did that. How are you doing? No, once you once you turn off one AI, they're turned off unless you like do the thing where you show mute the thing that would change her mind about Hyunai. Well, to be honest, nervous. I'm really nervous. You're the first person I've talked to in so long. I'm really happy about that. Oh well, I'm exposing a lot. I know you promised to trust me at all, so thanks. It's just this is all really new to me. But it's good, I'm glad. I wouldn't be so nervous if I wasn't happy you were here to listen. How do you feel about me? Wow, that's a tough question. I mean, you seem like a really good person. I think I could call you a friend. You seem to be a good listener. I like that. Does that answer your questions? Yes. Okay, good. Now that I really understand why Mute was asking. Why don't you treat me with more respect? I- what? Jeez, my word, what are you talking about? What have I ever not treated you with respect? I don't know what's wrong with that awful AI, and I definitely don't know what's wrong with you. Why would you even say something like that? Jeez. Ugh. What do you really look like? Well, about a few thousand lines of assembly code and a few gigabytes of memories, I suppose, sitting on a hard drive somewhere. I don't really know what that looks like. Oh, you meant before I died, didn't you? Heh. <laughs> when I... Well, I was 13 years old when I woke up and 16 when I died. So I looked younger, but I wasn't really all that different. Just shorter and, I guess, um, smaller in other places, too. Everyone always did say I was pretty, though, even when I was really young. So just picture a shorter version of me without the glasses, and with my hair in some bra dumb braid or another, in a handbok, and that's pretty much it. I never really got to dress up the way I wanted to. Even, this is the first time I've been able to wear my school uniform since I was 13 before I got put in stasis. How silly is that? Being excited about wearing a uniform. And I mean, you know how much I was into cosplay. I never ha really had a chance for that when I was alive. Why do you even ask? What are you thinking? You look good. Ah, well, thank you. I have reached two other endings so far. I've reached the harem ending and the, uh, and the taking Hunai off the ship ending. Anyway, we should get back to the more serious stuff, don't you think? We started out the stream on a, on a high, on a high note. <sighs> Isn't that the one question you're supposed to never supposed to ask a woman? Geez, so rude. I was born in the year 2415, and I was put into stasis for I don't know how long. Then I lived for another three years and died about 622 years ago at the age of 16. So, um, you tell me how old I am. I don't know. Really, I don't think it matters at this point, does it? I just got here. Where's Cam? Cam is sick today. How do you feel about mute? Of course, that would be one of her questions. Well, let me put it this way, I suppose. Did she have anything nice to say about me? That's what I thought. Really, I don't know much about her, other than what I've read in other people's logs. She never talked to me, ever. I mean, she wasn't above talking about me, but no, never anything to me. 
That's all I know about her. She's a gossip. I don't even want to speak to her now. Oh, I could, we've done that one. Did you ever have any friends? That's so sad. After waking up from stasis, I only ever had one single friend. Oh, two I meant. Now that you're here. Anyway, before it was just her. The queen. My husband's wife. Ru Jehua. I wrote about her a lot in my diary. I'll just show you. It's probably better if you read it for yourself. These are from right after I got married. Well, I don't think I want to do that right now. Let's see. Because we might have unlocked something new by doing that. Yes, block six! Just us wives. Because we didn't even get to meet her in our, fir in our first playthrough of this because we sort of skipped the uh, mute questions part. Dear Diary, I guess it's been forever since I cared enough to write anything down. I just haven't seen much point. Since my last entry, I got married, moved into the palace, and lost my virginity. Ugh. Apparently for a girl my age, none of these things are really all that weird. The queen finally insisted on talking to me the night after I first slept with Deer's husband. I'm not expecting it. My sister warned me that she would probably be jealous and I'd just have to endure it. She outranks me and I would simply have to kowtow to her if need be. Haven't had to yet, though. We had tea together and she's at least started acting friendly. I'm sure sister was right. I'll get the brunt of her anger soon enough, but today she was friendly. How are you holding up? She asked me after we finished with tea. I shrugged. Do trust me. I know how hard it can be for a newlywed. I've been through it myself, but I was not. but I was at least older. You probably miss your family, do you not? That's what would be expected from any good girl. So, so I nodded. It gets easier with time. I had no response. I'm sorry, am I bothering you? You can leave if you wish. I, I simply thought you might like some company. Ah, <sighs> I wasn't sure how to respond to that either. I just clasped my hands and shook my head. I just wanted to be sure she said. There was a long pause that followed. Finally, she asked, how was last night? I was surprised that she was willing to bring up the subject, figuring it was a siege into her being vindictive towards me for sleeping with her husband, and I shrugged as she continued. I know he can be rough. Nobody ever talked about those duties with me. And then she smiled, and I felt like I could almost drop my guard. Oh, I had no idea what to expect my first time. Do believe me, I'm not jealous. That was nothing to be jealous of me. But do tell me how it was. Yeah, it made me think back to on last night. Honestly, it was the best night I've had since waking up in the future. Everyone. My mother, my sister, now my queen warned me it would be bad. It would be a duty and nothing more. But I honestly did love it. I would have let him keep me up all night if it had the energy for it. Ah, sex positivity! Right, yes! I guess while I was thinking of it all, I let out a slight smile. I caught myself, but not before she noticed. Oh! You Did you enjoy it then, she asked, touching my arm? I jumped. Please, please be at ease. This is perfectly alright too. So as long as you know it's not just for him, there's absolutely no shame in that. There is none. I expected her to jump into something passive-aggressive from that, but she didn't. All she did was change the subject and said that she was worried about me. Maybe she isn't so bad. Aww. So yeah, as you can see, she was kind. She was good to me. She really was. Uh, I take it you want to know more about my marriage then? What are you interested in? Uh, definitely Jehua. Ah, well then you're in luck. She's in all of these entries. I, well, she was really the only thing in my life worth writing about for the most part. Yeah, there's no dialogue from Hyunai in that log. Yes, spoilers, it's because they made her... Ironically, they made her mute. So she'd stop complaining about being treated like shit. <laughs> there's at least one in there that she wrote herself about her husband. You can see for yourself. She's a lot stronger than I ever was. So you can see for yourself why I admired her. And, well, just read them all, right? I believe we've read all these. Oh no, we don't have block seven, I don't think. Yes, we don't have block seven yet. But in this playthrough. More of block six! Dear Diary, Attending to my husband has been easier than I was afraid it would be. 
Yes, there's days when it requires more strength than usual to keep going. I'm still getting increasingly more sick. Nothing will change that, but it's not so bad, really. All I have to do is dote on him and try to anticipate his desires, and he's happy with me. No abuse or anything. Sure, it's not as if I like him. He's an ugly 40-year-old man who only cares about politics and never tells me anything. Love, well, that's certainly no concern. I don't know where I ever got the impression that was something that could happen in a marriage. I thought it was something from the past. Well, I was young before I got put in stasis. It might have been a mistake of childhood. As long as I do as I'm told, I'm not mistreated, like I was by my sister. And sleeping with him feels good. I really hope I don't get pregnant soon. I don't want that to stop. Doing that is really the only thing that makes me happy these days, and and, and Jay was talks with me. She's nice. She keeps me company when I stay up to wait on wait up for his return, and she fetches servants to take me to bed on those days where I'm too feverish to sit for too long, and she just talks to me as if I'm a friend. I don't really understand why, but I guess she doesn't really hate me after all. Do let me tell you, she said one evening while she brushed my hair. I always wanted a little sister growing up. That's how I think of you. Does that make sense? I shrugged. It was nice of her. And it felt so relaxing to let her touch my hair like that. She wasn't waiting for a response anyhow. By now she knows better. She just keeps talking kindly to me. Ah, and from the wife herself. The more she lives in my house, the more confused I am by the mystery that is the pale bride. No wonder my fa husband has been favoring the Kim family lately. Their daughter seems to be the perfect woman. She's not simply a pale beauty. She's always too shy to speak at all, let alone argue. She seems to hang off his every word, and it turns out is so actually completely humble in her education she cannot even read. Or rather, she cannot read the normal characters. I observed her writing to herself. Perhaps what maybe was a diary. When asked what it was, she wouldn't say. It was quick to hide it. I could not recognize a single character on her screen. They seem simplified compared to regular writing. Perhaps she has invented a writing system for herself? It's very strange. Did you ever receive those letters I sent to your house before I arrived? Before you arrived, I asked her curious. Seemingly, she had. Did you read them? Her response was worried, as if she was scared I would be angry to find out that she hadn't. I was not, of course. I'm sorry, I had assumed that you were able to read. That's when I found out that she wasn't. I offered to read them to her, which she seemed to, to, to which she seemed quite enthusiastic. I think I'm likely to leave out some parts, however. I had enough difficulty bringing myself to writing the more embarrassing parts of the family history. Bringing myself to talk about them, even if I know she would never say anything, is just far too much. Like all things with her, I cannot tell whether her enthusiasm is sincere or an effort to make me happy. This troubles me. Aww. Uh, of course I wasn't illiterate. I couldn't. I could read just fine, just not their stupid Chinese-based characters. I mean, I can understand them now. Everything except for my diary entries is translated from them. It's such a dumb way of writing, though. It makes everything come out so stilted compared to proper Korean. Uh, well, anyway, you're showing me that because you're interested in her ad admonitions, right? I don't know if I'm interested in her admonitions. Yes? Ah, then I'll just give you the letters she sent. She, they give all the details, even though when she was too embarrassed to tell me about it at the time. You can probably guess which parts she cut out. It's pretty obvious. It's the incest thing that she never told me about at the time. Having read that now, I, uh, don't really blame her. And, well, you can see what I mean for yourself. That's weird. Did I get new stuff? Ah, new stuff in block 10. Whoa! So much stuff here. Ugh. Let's see. I've already read this one. Ah, yes. My husband thought of the idea of taking a new wife. To the woman who will marry my husband. As you are no as you are doubtlessly aware, it's traditional for a noble man's mother to write poetic admonitions to be sent to the bride to be before she enters the family, explaining the circumstances and proffering advice to her. Sadly, your mother in law has long since departed, leaving the responsibility in my hands. Uh no, I they mentioned it, I just don't know what the context is yet. I never had any such letters sent to me, for reasons which I'll explain soon enough, and I have furthermore studied verse, only enough to know that I am unable to write it well. Hope you do not think less of me, pale bride, for addressing these letters in plain speech instead. Rather, pay attention to my words over my form, and please do not be hasty in erasing these letters after reading, for your own sake. Hope you find the advice and knowledge I will part on you useful. Ah, oh, I never read her letters at the time. I couldn't. 
I know she read them to me eventually, but I was just sort of numb to that sort of talk by that point. Now they're just hard for me to read. Oh. All right. Uh, as you're no doubt aware, the Ryu family has an extremely long and proud history. Every man to hold the title captain and emperor has always been of our house, and you are here to make sure that continues for another generation. The name goes all the way back to ancient times. Mytho uh, mythology speaks of Captain Ryu who had control of even the ship's movements through the stars themselves. Such things remain far removed from everyday life, but it is important to understand the significance of the house and the title that your first son will eventually come to inherit. It is an obvious matter that I do have the same family name as my husband. The official story, if you have not already heard it, is that we are cousins, making our marriage improper and less than ideal, but somewhat acceptable given the circumstances. At the time, there were no noble daughters who had not already been promised or given away in marriage, and obviously, a girl of any lesser upbringing could, po could not possibly be suitable as queen. Hence, cousins would have to simply have to do. Strictly speaking, this is all true. The part about there not being any nobles avail noble daughters available is not a misrepresentation. As far as any official genealogy is concerned, the emperor is the son of my father's brother. Uh, the part of which you may not speak of openly is that he is the old emperor's son only by adoption. As far as blood goes, woof. Uh, my husband is also my brother. As children, we never lived together, and it would, of course, have been strictly improper to spend any time together at that age. I would never say anything such as that my husband actually arranged for there to be no noble daughters to marry out of his desire to marry me. That would, of course, be a rather bold move to accuse an emperor of such. But you may wish to consider what the implications might be if such a thing truly did happen. I leave it to you to decide whether or not such a thing is plausible. All I will say is that despite our marriage being one of necessity, my husband has always been very fond of me. Whoa! Yikes! Yeah, no wonder you couldn't have kids. As for your responsibilities, your burden will be quite light. You will, of course, be expected to be the model of feminine virtue, but truthfully, I do not expect you'll have a very you will have very much trouble with this. So as long as you keep your head down, avoid scandal, and keep quiet, that will more than suffice. As far as the day-to-day -day is concerned, you will have nothing to concern yourself with, as this is the royal family you are marrying into. As queen, I run the management of the house's affairs and will not require any assistance from you in that regard. As part of a royal concubine's demonstration of modesty, you will have to share my own personal servant and will not have one of your own. While you will not have to be responsible for the, all the housework, be modest and do not remain idle at her expense. You are expected to be as unseen as the servants and to be voiceful only in the most moderation. Do not speak harshly to your servant and be appreciative of what she does and not incompassionate. <coughs> uh... Your one sole responsibility, responsibility will be spending as much time with the Emperor as it takes to produce a son. After you give birth, you will not need to worry about raising him. I will be there to make sure that is all arranged for. Simply make our husband happy, keep out of sight, and give him a son, and you will have no more to worry yourself with. Woof. The virtues in which you are expected to demonstrate are simply those expected of any woman, and given your noble upbringing, I will not condescend to treat you as if you do not already know them quite well. You're expected to be quiet and obedient, to me as well as obviously to our husband. Perchance you are scolded. Trust my judgment as your elder, but I will never act out of anger or spite. If scolded by our husband, you always respond with a smile, for your relationship with him must always be warm, and he is a wise man. I will not tell you to avoid court politics entirely, so as long as you do not cause trouble. But I will suggest that you simply watch from a distance. The temptation may exist to meddle, especially if you ever talk to the artificial girl Mute who lives inside our computer. She is a gossip and a friend of the Smith Noble family and is responsible for revealing much of what they try to keep hidden. She may seem fickle, but she does belong to the house of Ryu first and foremost and is quite loyal. Hmm. Nevertheless, meddling is not in your best uh, interest. Do not play politics, not only for our sake or for the sake of being a virtuous wife, but for the sake of your own family as well. They will receive favor not through any skiing on your part, but through our husband's will. Entertain yourself with gossip if you wish, so long as you keep quiet about it, but stand of politics. In the end, you will manage to go much further if you rely only on rewards for being a good wife. Did I skip? I, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I skipped the second page. It was more just like, be quiet, keep your head down. But please, do not think of all of this as meant to say you will be unloved. You may be a second wife, but you are still the daughter of a noble house, and that is a precious gift to the Ryu family. 
My husband has faith that you will bring him a son, and that means the world to him. Nor am I jealous, for you will relieve a heavy burden on our house, and for that I am grateful. As proof of his affection for you, let me share with you one secret, which I have, permitted, which I have been permitted to tell only you. In honor of you, my husband, in his capacity as captain and the emperor, has permanently changed his admin password to your birth name. My new sister, as you will be brought into the Ryu family, not as a mere lowly woman, but as a symbol of power in the inner chambers. You will not only represent the continuation of the Ryu bloodline by providing him a son, but your very name will represent the power of the captain's computer. Understand this, pale bride. Your duty may be, may be great, but you will be love. How do I get the last thing in block 10? And that's, yes, that... Cam and I sort of figured that out. Ah, I need to get the last thing by showing it to mute. Unless I could just get... The... The, like, block 10 code here. Do you want the code? Sure! Hit me up with the code! Ah, ID should be 10 dash RZ071. RZ071 hackers. Nope. Maybe I did it wrong. Oh. There we are. My fear of the pale bride, as it seems, was unfounded. Ah, in my letters I wrote to her that I was not jealous. A lie, of course. As queen, it is true that I have authority over any of my husband's other wives, but that authority certainly does not extend to his affections, especially since she is a beautiful woman of only 15 years and I'm a withered old lady, 20 years her senior. I'd be a fool not to be jealous. Mmm. Patterns are for chumps. I think Christine Love did that very much on purpose to prevent you from just being like, I've gotten this. And yet I am not. Until she officially married my husband, I had only seen her briefly at the formal interview. Aside from her beauty, she hardly made any impression. But now she is living in my house, and I have seen more of her while she is not busy attending to the Emperor, and I realize now I have no cause for jealousy that is any fault of hers. She hasn't spoken a single word to me, and it only looks at me from a distance. At first, I mistook this for arrogance, as though she thought me unworthy of approaching. Ah, uh, and I realized soon that it is not so. I see no smugness in her eyes, nor do I see happiness, nor sadness, nor anything else. She is afraid of me. Not the sort of fear that would show in her eyes, the sort of, fe the sort of fear that would paralyze or leave her on edge. It is hardly noticeable at all, yet I can tell. Her fear is that of resignation sort of fear where one simply waits for what one believes is inevitable, whatever that whatever it is that she thinks I will do to her. She is not afraid that I will be jealous. She knows it and is simply waiting for the consequences. I cannot be jealous of a woman like that. I feel for her. I want her to feel welcome. I want to give her hope she is clearly lost back. It is not out of jealousy that I say I earnestly want her to understand how lucky she is. When I last saw her, I took her aside and said, please, you do not have to fear me. If you ever wish to talk to me, please do find me. She said nothing, but did smile a little. I have seen her smile before, but only in a hollow way. Where the mouth moves, but no emotion stirs in the eyes. This was not that kind. I can hardly say that the twinkle in her- I can hardly say what the twinkle in her eyes meant, but at least I hope I don't think it was resignation. I do want her to talk to her soon, for her own sake. Oh, so sad. Alright, that's the end of that branch. We can go back to block six and get more of these good details. Dear Diary, I've been thinking a lot about how close my death must be now. Lately, I've been getting prone to fainting spells. It probably goes right along with my diminishing appetite. If the doctor from the past was right, I've still got over a year left to live, maybe more. He said it wasn't likely to get bad enough to kill me until I was at least 18. Although maybe all those years in stasis might have changed that, I don't know. But if he was right and I haven't lost track of time, I'm 16 and a half right now, so there's, a little, there's still a while. <sighs> I've been trying to hide the signs of sickness. Even if I could explain, I know full well that nobody would believe me. So far, hiding has been mostly working, although I did have one of my fainting spells while my husband was on top of me. He wasn't angry at me, though. I don't think he cared. 
I know all I write about these days is sex with my husband and conversations with his wife. The Kim family would be proud, I guess, but these two things are all that's really worthwhile in my life. I have other responsibilities, of course, they're just not that interesting, and that's about it. Anyway, the Queen has continued to be nice to me. She finally figured it out. Uh... We were having tea together one afternoon, and she was talking about nothing in particular, and she asked me some questions that I just shrugged to. I do hope you do not take this the wrong way, she then said, but there's something I would like to ask you. I nodded. I don't think I've ever heard your voice before. I nodded again. Why don't you ever speak to me? Are you just saving that for the Emperor? I didn't know how I didn't know how to respond. She was so close to it, bring up the subject that I wasn't able to, yet that wasn't the right question. I just shook my head and hoped that her neck question what and hope that her next question would be it was then he and i she said and certainly are you mute i felt like screaming yes at the top of my lungs i was so happy she'd finally figured out i smiled and was about to nod enthusiastically but suddenly i stopped what if she thought less of me if i said yes she knew that the reason i was so quiet and demure wasn't because of any sort of discipline those were the things that people liked about me she stopped liking me if she knew what if she told my husband I was so terrified, I couldn't think of any correct answer. If I said no, I'm sure she would have asked to hear what my voice sounded like, and then I'd be forced to disobey, and if I nodded, then she'd know I wasn't really just trying hard to be a good wife. I'm sure she would talk to my husband about it, and he'd know too. But while I stared at her in terror, thinking about how to respond, she sighed and sipped her tea. Do not worry about it, she said. You do not have to answer. Please, do forget that I ever asked. You know, nobody ever noticed that until her. Oh, that's brutal. Nobody cared. Nobody ever thought. Nobody thought. Nobody ever thought any of it or cared enough about me to find out. But she did care. She actually paid attention. She was great. Oh. My concern over the Pale Bride's condition has grown. Lately, she has seemed to grow even quieter, if such, as, if such a thing is possible for a mute girl. Ugh. Well, perhaps saying she's mute is an assumption too far on my part. I tried asking her directly, but she seemed too scared to answer. That simply make me, makes me more suspicious, and I should like to know why. I addressed my husband on the matter, telling him that I wish to speak to the woman of the Kim family house to see if I could find out what is wrong, and he shrugged me off, saying, Don't. They're valuable subjects. The, su the, somewhat, the son is someone I have my eye on in particular. The politics of this situation are far too delicate for you to be meddling with. I cleared my throat. He might be both my husband and my emperor, but that would not let but I would not let that stop me from being bold. Yeah. My dear husband, I don't care, I said flatly. I am worried about the girl, and I believe that talking to her mother might shed some light on the matter. The son is of no concern to me. I don't see why it matters. She's the perfect woman. Why are you jealous? he said, rolling his eyes at me. A gesture that he's only been able to use on me and his servants since becoming the emperor. Nobody had the patience for it when he was a child, and I don't have it now either. In ho, dearest, do you believe that the well-being of your wife is a political matter, or even an external matter, I asked. He didn't. So would you say it's a domestic matter, I asked. He reluctantly agreed. Then as a domestic matter, it is the responsibility of the woman of the house, is it not? Please tell me, you are obviously more well-read in the classics than I, I said, both of us knowing he wasn't. Ah, fine, he said, but just because it is your responsibility does not mean I can't overrule, or overrule you. He left silent in the follow-up. I have to take this from you. You do know that my concerns are valid, though, I replied. If you value my opinion, you will let me speak to the Kim mother. <sighs> there was a pause, and he raised his hands in annoyance. Very well, do it. It's women's business, and I don't want to part in it regardless. Then he just shook his head. <sighs> Why must all our conversations be arguments? And I smiled to him and left. He already knows the answer. I never know I never knew about that when we were alive like most things I only found out after I took up over the ship's computer it amazes me even more look at her she's a woman who actually stood up to a man and won she wasn't clumsy like I was she knew how to work it from her position isn't that so amazing the Empress is like the kind of woman who's like ah yes either these are the restrictions I must work within fine ah <sighs> Dear Diary, you always forget how terrible it is to cry yourself to sleep until it happens. Just the ultimate feeling of helplessness. But what's new there? I just miss her. Even if she scared me, I missed her so damn much. Oh no! Jay Hua was one of the only ones who was sympathetic to me. Why did she have to die? Is that my fate? Anything that makes whatever short life I have left bearable must go? Fate hates me, I've decided. I don't know what killed her. 
I overheard one of the servants saying the doctor claimed it was too much worry, causing an excess of wood in the spleen, which he claimed to be common in oversensitive women. I was baffled by the absurdity at the time, and I still am now. <clears throat> My only friend is dead, and her diagnosis is absolutely insane. What do you even say to something like that? I guess it's not like I need to worry about knowing what to say. But in light of that, it doesn't surprise me that nobody ever believed I was sick. With medicine, that's stupid. Why would they? All it does is reinforce how hopeless everything is. Ah. <sighs> Woof. I just constantly wonder, why did my father, or my own doctor, think that people would be smarter in the future, and that medicine would be better? My servant has been helping me get through all the funeral stuff. I mean, well, she's been guiding me through the rites, practically doing them for me, really. I'm so weak and so stunned, I don't even know how I've been getting out of bed. I couldn't describe any of the ceremony, it's all a blur. There's been lots of black dress, I suppose. That's my only impression. Lots of crying. Lots of crying. From me. I right, look, please, do you trust me? Yes. Ah. <sighs> please understand my position at the time. My world was so small and I just lost my only friend. Ah. Uh, then I, I'll give you the last two diary entries. They have the whole story. Please don't judge me while you read them. Please. Interesting. Dear Diary, sounds so pathetic to say. I've tried rewriting this to her a million times just to make it sound less pathetic for me, and I simply cannot. <sighs> there are two things that made life worthwhile. Two things that made this last year before I die be bearable. The first was Jake Wah's company, being the only person that was friendly to me. And the second is sharing a bed with my husband. For the past few months, that's what I've been saving all my energy for. That brief, precious half hour every few nights where I feel fulfilled, if only in the most literal sense. It's the most lovely feeling, and now I'll never feel it again. Those two things make my last year of life worth living gone forever. Those past few nights I've been trying to get the Emperor's attention in any way, pleading silently for his affections with no luck. On the fourth, or was it the fifth day, he finally took me aside and said, painful annoyance in his voice, Enough! Stop that! This is completely inappropriate. <sighs> You're supposed to be in mourning. Show some damn chastity. Or do you have no respect for my wife and your queen at all? He snapped. And when I looked confused, he just lectured me. When, he, when I cried, he sighed, held me tightly, and left the room. I haven't spoken to him since, but later that day, my servant came to my room with good news! I was to go visit my family for a couple months while the house is in mourning for Jay Hua. Couldn't argue, of course, even if I was able. So just like that, I was sent back to hell. I was dressed in the, the usual veil so nobody could see my face as I was exported, ex escorted back to the Kim house in the middle of the night. Oof. My mother and father were all there briefly to greet me, and in spite of how I felt about them, I put on my bravest smile and bowed and nodded politely to their questions about how I was doing. When they had gone, when they had to go to bed and left, leaving me alone with sister, Yong Sok was nowhere to be seen. Hi, she said. I never thought you'd end up visiting us again so soon. I shrugged. Well, let's have some tea. It's, ju it's just us still around, she said. I nodded. It seemed like a good enough idea. Then there was a pause. Well, go make it, she snapped, removing any doubt that she might treat me with any sort of friendliness. Of course I made the tea. I don't disobey her anymore. Thanks, she said. So Yong Sok is out, attending to official business at the moment, but you should avoid him. He's still angry at you because father-in-law finds you more important to the family than his own son. Can you blame him? I have no idea what she's talking about. She just continued. So you really shouldn't talk to him. Ah, I guess you can't really do that, can you? Haha, <laughs> well, you know what you, you know what I mean. And yes, I knew exactly what she meant. I'm surprised you're back so soon, though. Even, especially especially now that you don't have to share your husband. Does that mean you're the primary wife now? I don't know. Does that make you queen? Ugh, what a great fortune you have. Father-in-law must be so proud of you. I stared at her, wishing with nothing more than to be able to kill her through sheer force of rage. How could she possibly say something so awful? My only friend was dead and here she was taunting me. What an awful thing to do. But I couldn't hate her to death no matter how much I tried. So instead I tried ba holding back angry tears to hide my weakness. I couldn't do that either. These people suck. Please, just keep reading. Ah, yes. This is the one... Uh, this is the one where she kills everybody on the ship. Da-da-da-da-da-da. Dear Diary, I was far too feverish to do any real cooking, so my servant came to do all the work for me that night. When Father came in, I think he was drunk or just tired or stupid. You know, child, he said to me, you grew up to be a wonderful daughter. I was shocked to hear him say that and wave my servant out of the kitchen. 
I never even heard the slightest indication of that before. For the briefest moment, it even made me happy to hear that. That surprised me, as I actually felt that way. As a kid, I never would have wanted his approval. So why now? He continued to make me wonder. Do you remember what you were like as a child? Blah, blah, blah. And then she, like... Uh... He reminds her of how shitty they had been to her. Uh... Let's see. The more I thought about it, the more I was certain. That's what those dreams were about. That's what I'd wanted. But father, Kim Jong-soo, rather, had made sure to disavow me of those notions. I learned to stop arguing, to stop trying to fight, to stop dreaming of those things. In other words, I learned how to be a proper woman, and he was proud of that. Proud of destroying my dreams, and now I would die under the house of that man, silenced, broken, helpless, and unloved. I... I was overwhelmed by the strongest feeling I'd ever had in my life. The deepest bitterness, the most powerful resentment I could imagine. I looked at the knife near my hand and wondered, could I kill him before I died? Could I at least have justice? I tried to lift the knife. My hand twitched and it was too hard to keep a grip. I was just too weak. I'd never be able to do it. He smiled at me and said, sorry, please go ahead and keep cooking. I won't distract you more. Then just as he was about to go out the door, he added, take care of yourself. At that moment, I vowed I would. I wouldn't worry anymore about those people who would hurt me. I'd take care of myself. I couldn't stab him to death. I was too weak for that. But I remember there are other ways. If I disable life support, I can kill him and all the others too. It'll be quick and it'll be easy. And not one of them don't deserve it. And all I need to disable it is the admin password. It's perfect. Well, so there you are then. Uh, now you know, it's true. I did do what I said she did. Or what she said I did. I'm not gonna lie. I really, really wish you'd never met her. I wish she'd never said anything to you. I just, it was just so nice the way things were with us before. Things started out so well. I got to be cheery for the first time in my life since I was a child. <coughs> <coughs> Talking about actual romantic things together. And just, you know, having someone there to talk to. Someone who wasn't interested in shutting me up. But now, well, please, you've read my diary. You have to know. I didn't, you have to understand, right? I trust you. You do really? Oh my word. Yay! Ah, yes, then she's... Uh, just hear me out? Of course. Thank you, thank you so much. De then I can decrypt block seven! I trust her, but she's the worst girl because of that. I mean, that's not necessarily why I would be doing these things. I don't think I, like, I, like, she got a taste of, like, some freedom and then got sent back to her shitty family. Decrypt. Very well. Yep. 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 Why are we skipping so much? Has this been read before? Yes. We have read a lot of them. Uh, this is just this is just sort of cleaning up. Oh, we're at eighty three percent. So we have Everything, no, we don't have everything in block four, but we can only get to block four by showing things to mute, unless we just, like, type in the things. Yes, I did. Ah. Uh, but we're, we're learning new stuff. I don't know what the point of no return is before we get to the other logs. I guess we don't see anything in block eight, though, yet. Uh, oh, block eight is the midday reports. Hmm. There is no point of, re there is no, no point, there is no point of no return to the 100% log run. Uh... Woof. I think we've done a bunch of this before, because we've decrypted block seven. Did 
da 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 We've already read all of these blocks. Did we- we did all of block seven last time. Absolutely, that's why I... <laughs> we get some catharsis here. I'm just gonna actually hard skip through all of this dialogue because we have seen all of these things before. But I'm trying to get stuff unlocked. Yes, seven is where we learned that they cut out her tongue to prevent her from being lippy. Ah yes, the last stand. Do we need to ask Mute's last question though? I think we already did. You've read almost anything now. There's one more thing. Yeah, we have one more question. That's mute. Oops, clicked on the wrong one. Mute questions! Ah, why did I kill them? <sighs> Harry, you want to know what could make me look at my father's face and be filled with so much hatred? <sighs> you want to know how I could possibly think my whole family deserved to die? If you haven't already guessed, here's my last diary entry. I just can't say it myself. Just please just read it. And then we get the last entry in block seven. Which is where they do the horrible thing, which we're not gonna read it loud. We're not gonna read out loud. We've already read it. It's a lot. You can check out other VODs. That's why I gave up. That's why I wanted to kill them so much. That's sorry, it's really hard to talk about it. It's just I. I'll try. I'm sorry. I told you it makes sense, right? That there was a good reason? Please don't tell me if I think I've let you down. You haven't. I haven't? I mean, you understand me then? Yes? Thank you. Thank you so much. It really means so much to me. I'm so glad. I didn't know what I'd do if you didn't think. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I was terrified. So terrified. I thought you might not. I'm so glad. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Hey, subs! I definitely heard some subs. Where's my mouse? Bra -bra -bra. There we are. And hey! Hilarious subscribe for 16 months saying 16 months, that's like a baby and a half. And Loki892 also subscribed for 16 months in a row. Excellent. There's something really important I need to tell you. Oh, I want to... She wants to talk to me. All right, it's I have really strong feelings. I'm in love with you! It's so embarrassing. If I'm sure you think that's ridiculous. <sighs> da, 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 da. Do you think we might have a chance together, even just a chance? Oh, so close. Huh. We're like 90%. I feel like we've shown ba we basically have everything in this run except for the mate for the logs. No, because we got the other end. Yeah, we need the friend zone ending. That's exactly what I'm going to do, but I just want to make sure that there's nothing else I need to do here. I'm pretty sure we have pretty much everything here. All right. No. That's I well Ah, it's a long shot, I know. I'm not mad at you or anything. I just had to say it. If you can understand everything I've told you, I'm sure you can understand that. 
I've been hiding, I've been holding that in for a while. It's just, ah, geez, anyway, it's fine. Just forget about it. Anyway, there's something else I still want to ask you. It doesn't have to be as your wife or anything. I understand that you don't want that. Will you please take me with you just as, um, what's the word? Think of it. Ah, what's the word for a good friend except female? I'm drawing a blank here. The word is a good friend. Whatever it is, I mean, just like that. Can you take me with you as a passenger? Please? I feel like we can take her with as a as a passenger. Ah, uh, I'll deal compile myself right now. That way you can just drop down to the terminal and type download to copy everything to your ship, including myself. It'll only take a few days to do a complete transfer, so I'll see you soon. All right, really, and thank you. And then I can just say download, and then I get the friend zone ending. Uh, oh, if I say no here, I can, like, go by myself, which is really terrible. We get the lone ending. That's so mean, though. I'm not doing another run after this. I feel like I've gotten close enough to the logs, because we've read- we, we basically- we read the big story we missed out on, which was the Emperor's Wife storyline. Uh, it looks like we were missing block 8, which is just security logs. We got everything in block 7, we got everything in block 9. We got, uh, we missed a bunch of stuff that we can only get through mute in block four. Uh, so I feel like we're, I feel like at this point, I feel like I've explored this well enough. We're missing some in one and four. I think we got everything in one because one was the stuff between the, 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 the sisters. So... Uh, so we can, let's do the friend zone ending, and then we can reload the save and do the solo jerk-ass ending. Oops. And then you gotta sit there for three days to download, uh, download you and I. Oh, she's very like, na na. Oh, we're ninety seven percent complete. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we're so close. Uh, nope. I'll take you. Da 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 da. Ha ha! And I can go download. And I can go no to be a real asshole. The security program, the other ending is mute, right? Yeah, I don't have the mute ending. Ah! Achievement unlocked! Forever alone! I don't, I, going back and doing the mute ending is, would be very difficult, I think. Wow, we strung her along. Yeah, that's fine. All right. I think that's it. I think we, yeah, 97% of the logs. Because this sort of collects everything you've seen in all your playthroughs. So we have everything in block one. We have everything in block two. We have everything in block three, I believe. Yep. And we're missing a few things in... We're missing one thing in block four. That might be literally the only... And we're missing block eight. No, we got that. I think that's the only thing that's available in block eight is just the camera footage. Because this is how much you've found in all of games. Oh, 4 GA 788. Ah! Normally, my conversations with Mute are of a rather frivolous nature. Gossip in the affairs of some of the more important noble houses, as well as her trying to bait whatever she is able to out of me. 
Well, I think such a flow of information is valuable. I might pa so I might pass news to my husband that he might not otherwise hear. I would not consider her attitude to have any resemblance to seriousness. Previously, I assumed that this was simply impossible due to her nature. Well, I do not really understand how, despite her explanations, anyone could live inside a computer screen. She says she is an artificial person. I had assumed that, perhaps, her absence of a soul prevented her from feeling serious emotions. Ordinarily, she wears incredibly bold, colorful clothing, her golden hair absol absurdly well adorned. For the past month, though, she has been uncharacteristically humble, wearing an unappealing brown dress with her hair undecorated. My curiosity got the better of me at last. Please, I have wondered, why are you so tired? It is unlike you, I asked. She gave me an odd look. Huh? She asked. It's a morning dress. That much was obvious and not particularly the thrust of my question. Do not tell me that you, did you not tell me that you were thousands of years old and you have no family? For what reason are you wearing mourning? She gave me an annoyed look. Friend of mine died, okay? No, I don't have a family. It's always been just me. But this guy was a really good friend and he definitely deserves that kind of respect, she said. We were super close. Do you wish to tell me about him, I asked. She gave me another look that I couldn't quite read but seemed somehow sad. Nah, she said. I don't want to talk about it right now. I miss him too much. Hey, I'm going to go now. I'll talk to you later. I said goodbye, and she disappeared from the computer screen. But as she did, I could have sworn that I saw her start to cry. So I guess that's the letter we missed. Oh, now we've read it. But it won't, like, come up in our... In our searches. And I think that was it. I think that was the only thing that we missed, honestly. So, good job, team. Yep. Everything in block six. Yay! There's two missing. The achievement that popped up said 95 out of 97. Oh, maybe. Well, that's not bad. So, anyhow... Thanks so much for playing Analog A Hate Story with me, or at least going through and, and watching me sort of save scum around to get as many of the endings as I could. I'm going to say this good enough. This was a great game. I suggest you play it, even though you've probably seen a lot of it at this point. Uh, now Kiss is taking a break because uh, I'm off next week for PAX Australia. I'm going to be in Australia this time next Friday. Will you ha play Hate Plus as well? Possibly at some point, yes. Uh, uh, but uh, we're taking a break because I'm going to Australia and then we're coming back. We're going to be really busy and then like a couple weeks after that we're doing Desert Bus. So I'm taking the, the stream off the schedule until after Desert Bus just because I don't know if I'm going to have time to do a, store, uh, a full game before the whole stream gets shut down again uh, due to other things. So I think uh, I will return with more dating sims or maybe other sims. I kind of want to play uh, uh, Oberdin, The Mystery of the Oberdin, I think is what it's called, the new game by Lucas Pope, which is not ab it's absolutely not a dating game. So it's probably outside of the purview of Now Kiss, but it is apparently a great visual novel and puzzle game. So I'm going to try to pitch that as something I will be playing. Uh, so... Yes, I have sir, heard of Persona New Days. It's a fan-made dating sim where you kiss Persona 4 boys. I would like to play that, but I need to make sure it's not NSFW first. So, anyhow, thanks everybody. Uh, we had a, one more last second sub come in. Uh, so, hey, Nova Girl, Nova Girl 5 subscribed for nine months in a row saying, Babby Sub and uh, Mamatane4711 just subscribed. Thanks for joining. Vlogs before or after Desert Bus. Uh, uh, right now, Ben is working hard on a vlog, a loading time about us doing uh, the LAN, and then we have a, uh, then we have uh, a bunch of footage we shot of us at Shucks, and there'll definitely be uh, some sort of loading time going up about me and Ben and Beej and Graham having adventures in Australia. So uh, we have lots of stuff coming out uh, in the vloggy kind of. Uh, way, uh, and I hope that everybody enjoys that. So, it is a very good murder mystery. I do love a good mystery. I'm really, really into the idea of a good mystery. But for now, I'm into the idea of going offline. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Uh, we're coming back in about an hour and a half with the crapshoot, <coughs> where we will be filming some very funny scripts. Cam wrote a real, a real corker, and I can't wait to uh, tell you guys about it. I'm sort of sad that he's sick today. 
but I'm happy that he's taking the day off because that's the thing to do if you're sick. All right, bye everybody. See you in a bit.